say our prayers, allow me to call on Nicole and family to please light our Advent candle as, as we bless the Advent wreath. And let us pray. Lord our God, we praise you for your Son, Jesus Christ, who is Emmanuel, the hope of the peoples. He is the wisdom that teaches and guides us. He is the Savior of every nation. Lord God, let your blessing come upon us as we light the candles of this wreath. May the wreath and its light be a sign of Christ's promise to bring us salvation. May he come quickly and not delay. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And Again, special welcome to visitors and friends of our faith community at St. Faustina's. Welcome to the first Sunday of Advent. We will hear the Lord Jesus cautioning everyone to simply be alert, to stay awake. We begin this Mass by an acknowledgement of our sins, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary Ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And let us pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming so that gathered at his right hand, they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. 
A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. You, Lord, are our Father. Our Redeemer, you are named forever. Why do you let us wander, O Lord, from your ways? And harden our hearts so that we fear you not. Return for the sake of your servants, the tribes of your heritage. Oh, that it would rend the heavens and come down with the mountains quaking before you. While you wrought awesome deeds we could not hope for, such as they had not heard of from of old. No ear has ever heard, no eye ever seen, any God but you doing such deeds for those who wait for him. Would that I might meet us doing right, meet us doing right, that we are mindful of you in our ways. Behold, you are angry and we are sinful. All of us have become like unclean people, for all your good deeds are like polluted rags. We have all withered like leaves and our guilt carries us away like the wind. There is none who calls upon your name, who rouses himself to cling to you. For you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us up to our guilt. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you the potter. We are all the work of your hands. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. St. Paul to the Corinthians. 
brothers and sisters. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always on your account for the grace of God bestowed on you in Christ Jesus. That in him you were enriched in every way with all discourse and all knowledge. As the testimony to Christ has confirmed among you so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you firm to the end, irreproachable on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. And by him you were called to fellowship with his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Be watchful, be alert. You do not know when the time will come. It is like a man traveling abroad. He leaves home and places his servants in charge, each with his own work and orders the gatekeeper to be on the watch. Watch, therefore, you do not know when the Lord of the house is coming, whether in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or in the morning. May he not come suddenly and find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to all, watch. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. First off, I'd like to say, open up with saying, Happy New Year, everyone. I can see some faces, wow. We only had celebrated Thanksgiving three days ago, and now what's New Year about? That is when we're talking about the secular year, you will get a little shock, but liturgically, liturgical year is a new year for us. After the Feast of Christ the King, we enter into the first Sunday of Advent, ushering in the new liturgical year where we focus on the Gospel of Mark. And Mark is a beautiful, concise way of portraying to us Jesus in his uh, preachings, in his parables and his stories. Mark's gospel is the shortest of the gospels and yet it is the most direct, concise. Today, Jesus tells about this story of the, uh, the master who leaves his servants in charge, but he never tells them when he is returning. So he tell, tells them, Jesus tells them, watch, be alert. The master can come at any hour, in the evening, at Capro, in the morning, just be watchful. Okay. Now watchfulness is 
quite a task to do. Most often we get complacent. We get tired of being so alert and watchful and we just get distracted by other things that can derail us from the focus and that is why we have Advent, the season of Advent, which prepares us for Christmas. The Advent season is like a uh, spiritual alarm clock for us because perhaps in the past months, a few past weeks, we've been less watchful or inattentive. We were not alert enough to the Word of God and to the uh, spiritual preparations we need to have every day of our lives for that second coming of the Lord. So this story of the Master in the Gospel today, returning at any time and so on in an unexpected hour is for us an alertness to that second coming of the Lord Jesus which entails tremendous preparations and alertness on our part. If we go back to the readings today from Isaiah, the first reading there, the people are reminded of their complacency. They have wandered far from God. Now they are wallowing in guilt and in sin. And here is the prophet asking God to please be near to us once more. Let your presence be felt by us. Beautiful imagery there of rending the mountains, you know. Rend the mountains, come down to us. Help us, show your face. And yet in the end, there is this air of resignation from Isaiah saying, you are our father, our redeemer, you are the potter. We are the clay, mold us, refashion us from our guilt, from our sin, mold us into becoming yours once more. Okay. And that is the essence of being alert, is our recognition of our guilt, of our sinfulness, so that we can be orientated back to God, focused on the St. Paul, in his letter to the Corinthians today, the second reading, reminds the Corinthians of how grateful Paul is for the many gifts given to the Corinthians. The Corinthian community is a very talented community, full of gifts. Everyone has had very, very clear, beautiful gifts from the Spirit, and yet most of them became complacent about the gifts. Some of them did not use those gifts. Some of them took pride in those gifts and used those gifts for their own benefit as if they were the source of those gifts. And so here is Paul reminding them, God has blessed you through the Holy Spirit to live in Jesus Christ's name and focus on your gifts as ways to enliven Build up the community, okay? Be awake that those gifts, be alert that those gifts are meant to build up the community rather than to divide the community, rather than to make the community fall asleep and wallow in the beauty of those gifts. No. Paul is urging everyone to, you know, in Jesus Christ, let us be alert with our gifts. Let us make great use of those gifts entrusted to our care, okay? So back to the gospel, we are a people now alert of the Lord's coming. We want to renew our sense of guilt and sin so that we will resort to the sacrament of reconciliation, prepare ourselves internally, spiritually for Jesus. We may be bogged down by our Preparations for Christmas, the tree needs to be put up, you know, major scene and the lights outside. Oh my, people are now enjoying putting up those lights, Christmas lights. And yet, we have to remain focused on that internal spiritual preparation, the alertness that Jesus can't come to us at any time, but more so reminding ourselves that as the risen Savior is present in, a brother or a sister in need, we must be alert, alert of the presence of the risen Jesus in our brothers and sisters. 
There may be a neighbor of yours or a child in the neighborhood complimenting you of how good you are as a person, how pleasant you are. That is a sign of God's love, a sign of grace for us. There may be someone in uh, the workplace uh, correcting you or reminding you of something, some procedure that needs to be done. And yes, indeed, yeah. Here at church, you know, our ushers are welcoming you and giving you those masks and reminding you that masking, distancing, and sanitizing is essential. That too is a grace moment because we forget, and I do forget that a lot of times. Brothers and sisters, we open our hearts and minds to the Lord as we prepare the Eucharistic table today. Let us be alert and mindful of His presence or signs his presence into our lives, that we may be ready to meet him not only at Christmas, but in that final hour for eternity. Amen? Amen. Let us now profess and renew our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made, for us men, for our salvation, He came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We begin the season of Advent with trust in God's love for us. Let us present Him our needs and the needs of our world. For the church, may the Lord look graciously upon us as we proclaim the gospel message. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civic leaders, may Christ strengthen their conviction as servant leaders for all people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who face hunger and malnutrition, may God grant them strength and provide the means for them to obtain their daily bread. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our active military and veterans, may they know how grateful we are for their service to our country. We pray, <clears throat> we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our family members and loved ones who struggle with mental illness, may God bring them healing and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our loved ones who have died and those asking special prayers, we especially remember Tonia Esposito. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, For all our intentions, spoken and unspoken, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, our Father, hear these prayers of your people and grant them in accordance with your holy will. We ask this in the name of Jesus, your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, which earth has given, and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of his water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ. Who humble himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed are you, Lord, God of hearts. Wash away my iniquities, Lord, and cleanse me from my sins. Pray, dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God our loving Father. Accept, we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us, and may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for He assumed at His first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when He comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them, like the dewfowl, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, 
for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. And do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death, and resurrection we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters, especially Antonia Esposito, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, Saint Faustina, our patron, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that, with the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us now offer each other a sign of Christ's peace.
behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. For I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but I will say a word, and my soul shall be healed.
Any visitors? You can raise your hand. Oh, we have a visitor here. Welcome, brother. Do we have birthday celebrants today and for the rest of the week? Wedding anniversary today and for the rest of the week. <laughs> Wedding anniversaries? Maybe next week then. <laughs> okay. And let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them 
to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our life. Thanks be to God. God. Soon and very